So, the Falling Star Beasts are really interesting. Let's talk about it, shall we? Elder Ring is host to a vast variety of wildlife. From the various dog breeds, to goblins, to- GOD WHY MAKE IT STOP! However, some of the most intriguing specimens come from the void itself, falling from orbit and making themselves home among the lands between. These are Falling Star Beasts. Alien geotars with ankylosaurian stingers, massive mandibles, and a bad attitude. Three can be found so far in the lands between. The youngest found within the booby trapped Celia Tunnel. Cause what better way to greet new players than to throw a cosmic nightmare at them from soft in a space clearly too small for it? How the rock can manage to contain this thing, I will never understand. Pin missiles are annoying, don't get me wrong. The rock type beats bug, even in this world. The second and third beasts don't show their faces until the mid-game, with the first having landed right outside of Lindell itself, surviving comfortably in its nest off the crowd of star callers who decided to start worshipping it while harvesting chunks of meteor. Given the fact that these things are born from, or even are, said meteors, and possess abilities similar to the gravitic chunks, I can't help but feel like these rocks are either chunks of the falling star's skin, or some form of excrement. The final beast we encounter has settled in its crash site atop Mount Gelmir, where it's reached relative maturity in its nest. Given its stature, more developed tail, mandibles, as well as its GIANT BULGING EYE! Now I say relative maturity, because if we actually take a look at the quote unquote eyeball of this creature, we can make an absolutely terrifying discovery. The eye of this creature is actually a head emerging from the floof, exactly like another alien monster. Estelle, natural born of the void. A bastard star sent upon the eternal cities to bring them to ruin. He's the reason why they're considered lost cities. So, each of these things are, in theory, larval stages of Estelle's life cycle. That makes sense, really. They're both cosmic wayfarers of sorts. Share plenty of attacks. and have another connection we'll get into later. Meanwhile, you can find even more evidence of this underground, where we find similar looking creatures called malformed stars. we appear to be smaller, less vibrant versions of Estelle, with far weaker gravity abilities. Now, time for our second commonality between these three. Hey. They're mandibles. Runa, if you would. Thank you, Runa. The mandibles of all three of these creatures are incredibly similar. Same general shape, floof, and the full-grown beast even has a smaller subset like Estelle. This is unlikely to be mere coincidence that these star beasts seen in-game are all collectively inspired by an organism on Earth with a similar violent attitude, life cycle, and of course, mandibles. Say hello to the antlion. In their larval stage, Antlions nest within large pits within the sand or earth, using their massive mandibles to crush and gore anything unlucky enough to fall within their dens. Sound familiar? The craters formed by the falling star beasts are very similar to the antlion's nest. We can even go further into the animation of the falling star. As much like how an antlion will use its jaws to flick sand and gravel at anything climbing out of its nest, the falling stars will use a similar flicking motion with their jaws to either fling rocks or summon spikes. It's unconfirmed if antlions can also fire lasers, but with nature being how terrifying it is, I would not bet against it. Moving underground, ironically enough, malformed stars, as well as the fully formed Estelle, both bear an uncanny resemblance to the adult forms of the antlion. While they lack mandibles, the wings, legs, and body shapes are all there. The perching behavior of the malformed stars could even be a connection to how newly matured antlions need to perch upside down to help their wings fully open, due to the malformed star being an immature version of Estelle. Here's a fun fact. Antlion reproduction organs are housed in the tail. Now I'd like to point you to this attack right here. This one. Right here. Just uh, just soak it in for a second. So the next time you go up against the Stell, do remember to watch out for his baby maker bitch slaps. And now, for some bonus facts. You can actually find a small version of Estelle's wing on top of the old palace ruins.
It's effectively a damselfly wing turned into a scimitar, with the added bonus of a built-in moonlight wave on the heart too, not unlike the FromSoft blade itself. The bull aspects of the Flying Star Beasts are so obvious I didn't feel it necessary to mention them. That was until... As it turns out, you can pull a bullfighter on them with a charge thrust to the face, be it a charge R2 on a spear, or something like Carrion Piercer. Just don't do it too close to the ledge. The new one will get you good. Thanks for indulging me in my adoration for these creatures. They're not the most important bosses, but the prime examples of the attention to detail that FromSoft puts in the enemy design. Hopefully you guys learned something new today, and even if you haven't, stay safe out there.